Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to kind of go over a solution to a recent uh, homework assignment in which you were provided this particular database. It's our small video do uh, store database, and we have a number of customers in there. It looks like about 1,600 customers, and we have a selection of about 350 videos, each with a daily movie rental rate, or daily, weekly, actually. Um, doesn't really matter how we treat that. And then we have a number of loan transactions that occurred over a particular period of time. So, And then you had a number of uh, activities to do with this database, all related to making custom forms. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So one of the first things I asked you to do was to create a form for loans that will use the date diff function and display the number of days out when a user has entered both a checkout date and a return date. So. If you could imagine, uh, when a loan takes place, let me go ahead and just create a quick form just by selecting the table, hit the form button, and now I've got a form. That's all it really takes. But you can imagine this is going to occur. This would be a loan transaction. And you have to kind of suspend uh, your belief of reality here for just a second because obviously in a very modern age, uh, we wouldn't have to physically type in each transaction for a loan checkout. But this is the basic concept, although in reality it's much more automated. Of course now you would scan in a barcode that would be on the movie, um, and scanning it in would do this. It would record the loan ID, it would record the customer who checked it out, it would record uh, a movie ID, a unique number that represented that particular disk, and then it would also record the checkout date and it probably also records some other data too like uh, maybe the rate or something like that and then the return date isn't in there but what happens when that movie gets scanned in again another barcode reads that same movie and says hey this movie ID has just been recorded in it does a quick query it finds it finds the uh, the data the table record for this particular movie ID that's been checked out without a return date and then it records a return date and then of course it's the return date the difference between the return date and the checkout date which determines if the customer had the movie within the allotted time or if they went over the allotted time and then have to pay a fee all I really want you to do is to be able to record that time in there the days in between these two dates. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And I've got my form created, so I'll just head over to Design View for this form. Let me give myself a little bit more room to work down here. And if I don't like how long all of these are, I can just click and hold down my Shift key, and I can size those down a little bit. In fact, maybe I'll put the days right over here off to the side. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a text box, and I'll just Put that right over here. It gives me a label. I'll just call that uh, days out. And within this current unbound control, I'm going to go ahead and put in the date diff function. So uh, equals date diff. Okay. And I'm going to do a set of parentheses for this. And in the parentheses, I'm going to put in the three key parameters that we need. One is going to be the interval in question, and I want days, so I'm going to put the letter D in quotes. And there's several different things you can put as the interval in here. You can do YYYY to get the year, um, M for month, uh, W for weekday, things like that, H for hour, N for minute. Uh, M is reserved for month. So there's different things you can put in, but I want to know the days in between. And then it's simply a matter of the two dates in question. So my checkout date is an actual field, so I'm going to put that in square brackets. So I'll type in checkout date, closing square brackets, comma, and now I need my return date, which is also going to get put in brackets, return date. So that takes care of that, and of course the closing parentheses. So I know it's a little tough to see, so let me just go ahead and take a moment to um, expand this out a bit. Take this, move it off to the side, bring that over, bring that off to the right. Actually, let me just size this a bit so you can see it all in one line. So there's my date diff function. And if I go ahead and jump back over to form view, I'm going to see that this particular customer had the movie out uh, January 29th, 
I'm sorry, they took it out January 20th, they returned June 29th, they had it out for nine days, and that could very well be meaning a late penalty. And then you could do something different. You could actually do a little calculation down here that um, took the number of days out and perhaps divided it by seven to find out if they had it out longer than they were supposed to have it out and all that kind of thing. Or, you know, that could be something else as part of the movie. Maybe the seven... You know, some movies can be out for three nights, some movies can be out for seven nights. A bunch of different ways you can do it. But the basic premise is that is our date diff function used in here. And if I'm back in my form view and, form view and I was going to enter in a new transaction, um, let's see, I'm going to bear with me. I want to be able to copy in some basic information here. So I'm just going to do a screen, cap, screen grab of this. So that way I can reference it. I'm going to create a new transaction. So remember, this is all happening with a barcode automatically. But let's say I type in a loan ID. Okay, so I have a new loan ID, and I'll just record the same customer. Let's see, it was customer 71535. And I have to get exact customers because I've got referential integrity in four, so I can't put in a customer ID if that customer doesn't exist. And I can't put in a movie ID if they don't exist. Movie ID is 736354. And I'll put in the checkout date as, let's see, I'll put it in as a few days ago. So I'll do like 5513. All right. And then I'll put in the return date. So you notice my days out doesn't display yet. But I'll put in the return date of 59. 13 and as soon as I take care of that and I tab over then it's automatically showing that movie's been out for four days and that is our basic date diff functions go back to design view real quick and that was pretty easy to put in there as long as you know that function